Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope you're all doing great. In today's video, I'm gonna take you around the fish room. We're gonna talk about some upcoming changes. I'm gonna reveal some new tanks. We're gonna give you an update on some of the fry. And if time allows, at the end of this video, we're gonna do a live feeding. Full disclosure, it's only worms. Anyways, I hope you stick around and check this one out. All right, YouTube, we are gonna start out by talking about some of the changes back here in the fish room. We're gonna start out with these 275 gallon tanks back here. Most of the changes are gonna take place to the top 75 gallon tank. That's where I keep my L264 Sultan Plecos. I've talked about getting rid of the L264s in a previous video, simply because they are my least favorite Pleco that I currently keep here in the fish room. Still a gorgeous Pleco, but just my least favorite. Now I was willing to part ways with the uh, L264s because really I wanted to move a bunch of L134s up into this tank and have a second breeding colony of L134s. The L134s that I would move up into that tank are down here in this 40 gallon grow out tank. And they just simply aren't ready. Now I have about 30 L134s in here and these are all F1 grow outs from last breeding season. But again, they're just not quite ready. They need at least another year to reach sexual maturity. So there's no sense in getting rid of the L264s if these fish simply aren't ready. Also, the L264s, well, some of them have reached sexual maturity, so there's a chance that in the next year, the L264s might actually start spawning. And that'd be a good problem to have. So now that I've decided to keep the L264 Sultan Plecos for at least one more year, we still need to deal with the tank itself. When you look at the tank, it looks like a planted tank with angelfish. It does not look like a pleco tank. Definitely not a pleco tank set up for breeding exotic plecos. That needs to change. Now you look over on the left side of the tank here, all these plants, in fact, all of the plants in this tank are rhizome plants. But the majority of these plants have rooted into one big piece of driftwood over on the left hand side of the tank. It looks good for pictures, it looks good for YouTube, it looks like a nice lush tank. The problem is I can't get back down here with the gravel vac to clean underneath and behind this driftwood so a lot of waste collects down here. So it makes it real hard to keep this tank as clean as I'd like to keep it. Now this tank is set up on an automatic water change system. We do put in 10 fresh gallons of water each day. The water parameters are fine. I just can't keep the tank as clean as I'd like to keep it. So I'm gonna be removing that big piece of driftwood. All the plants are coming out. I might hang on to some of the bulbitis for background plants, but I need to set this tank up with more caves and uh, things like that. Make it a more basic pleco breeding tank. And again, it's not gonna look as nice for pictures or YouTube, but the primary focus of this fish room is to breed exotic plecos and some Corydoras. So it is what needs to happen. So this 75 tank underneath the Sultan Pleco tank, this is where I keep my group of L397s. I have eight adults and four juveniles in here. We're not gonna be making major changes, just a few minor changes. What's happening down in this tank is, well, nothing's happening and that's the point. The eight adults are sexually mature. They should have been spawning by now and they're not. I'm not seeing any breeding behavior in this tank right now. So I'm just gonna make some changes. I might remove some of the driftwood. I'm probably gonna add a few more caves. We're just gonna change up the layout a little bit and just see, keep our fingers crossed and hope we have better results. So out here in the rec room, I have another 75 gallon tank, and this is where I keep my group of L494s. They're a Picoltia, very closely related to the L134 Leopard Frog Pleco. But I wanna do something different with this tank. So I'm gonna take the L494 Plecos out of here. I'm gonna remove the slate and the caves, and I'm gonna be adding these fish in with the L264 Sultan Plecos that we talked about first. There's a couple reasons for that. Well, the Sultan Plecos, I only have seven Plecos back there. I can definitely put more fish, more bio load in that tank. It's on an automatic water change system, gets 10 gallons of fresh water each day, all that kind of stuff. Plenty of floor space for more Plecos back there. 
The L494s and the 264s like similar water conditions, similar diet, etc. So they'll be very, very compatible. But that's going to free up this tank and allow me to put a couple schools of Corydoras in this tank. And here's another reason why I like this change. Number one, this tank is out here in my rec room. The rec room runs about four or five degrees cooler than my fish room. This tank is kept at 80 degrees for the plecos. Corys only like the, the temps around 74, 75 degrees. Some like it even just even cooler than that. But I plan to run this tank at about 75 to 76 degrees instead of the current 80 degrees. And that's going to help me cut down on some of my electrical consumption and energy costs. Plus, I need a four-foot tank for a couple schools of the Corydoras. So let's get back into the fish room, and I'll show you which Corys we're actually talking about. Now, back here in the fish room on the grow-out rack, this middle 20-gallon tank, I've been using this as a quarantine tank for my Corydora Suicides. I have a total of 10 of them in here and I'd really like to move them into a larger tank. They've gone through quarantine, the quarantine time or quarantine process has been completed. The Corydoras suicides, they're a lot more active than many of the other Corydoras species that I have here in the fish room. They also like a little more current and they're gonna enjoy a much larger footprint. So I definitely wanna move them into a four foot tank. The only problem is I don't have any available four foot tanks. So that's also one of the reasons why we're making these changes is to free up that 75 gallon tank out in the rec room for this group of corridor suicides and one other group of corridors. Let's go check those out. Now down here in this 10 gallon tank, I have a couple different corridor species. I have Corydoras green lasers and then I have Corydoras duplicarius. I picked up those duplicarious from my brother in trade for some L134 leopard frog plecos. I have a total of 10 of them down in here, and they're eventually going to need their own tank as well. So 10 Corydoras duplicarious, 10 Corydoras suicides are heading out into that 75 gallon tank in the rec room. Now those two types of Corydoras can definitely be compatible and housed together. The Corydoras duplicarius are a lineage 9 Corydoras, and the Corydoras suicides are a lineage 8. So no need to worry about them crossbreeding. And finally, the last change is not going to be a change with the tank or the stocking, but just a change of plans. Now this tank here, this is a 40 gallon long. This is where I keep my group of L333s. I talked about getting rid of this group in a previous video a few months ago. I have since changed my mind and decided to hold on to them again for at least another year. In fact, I'm going to be picking up some additional 333s and getting at the same time getting rid of some of the L333s in here. Some of the L333s I have in this group are really not the best looking specimens. They don't have the type of patterns that I'm looking for. And I found somebody locally that has some select quality L333s that are just absolutely stunning. In fact, I'm going to be trading some Green Laser Cory Doris for two or three of those select grade L333s. Now they are juveniles, they're only about three, three and a half inches long, so it's going to take some time. But the patterns they're holding at such a young age are just exceptional. So I'm going to be actually selling some of these 333s at an upcoming auction, swapping them out for a some new L3, uh, 333s from a different line and we're just going to keep moving forward with this project and um, see what comes of it. So those are the changes that we're going to be making here in the fish room and those changes are going to start this week. So perhaps in my next video those changes will be complete so stay tuned. Now I also mentioned that I added some new tanks to this fish room and we also said we're going to take a look at some fry. So let's check out the new tanks. Now in a recent video, I talked about adding an additional row of tanks above the triple 40 rack. I need more grow out tanks, more tanks for tumbling eggs, etc. Currently in the fish room, I have these two tens, this five gallon tank. I have that 40 gallon breeder where we're growing out some L134 leopard frog plecos. We have this 20 gallon long over there. We have this row of 20 gallon tanks over here. The problem I have is only a few species are currently actively breeding in this fish room. And all of my grow out tanks are already full. So once all these other fish start breeding, I'm gonna find myself in a hot mess unless I add some more tanks. So I talked about adding a row of 10 gallon tanks above the triple 40 rack and mission accomplished. We now have that shelf up. 
We have the expansion to this rack, and we have seven new 10-gallon tanks. And this is just going to give us the added flexibility and the space that we're going to need to operate a little more efficiently and effectively back here. One of these tanks is already being put to use. I have a little bit of work to do yet. Need to cut some tops. I need to run some airlines, but we're about 90% complete with this project and it feels good. I am excited to have these additional 10 gallon tanks back here in the fish room. I desperately needed more small systems for growing out fry tumbling eggs, etc. This is really going to help take this fish room to the next level. Now with that being said, we currently have a bunch of fry here in the fish room, so let's go ahead and check some of them out. All right, YouTube, well, let's go ahead and start out with this brand new 10 gallon tank up here. We're already putting these things to use. Up here on this end tank, I do have an egg tumbler in there. I do have a couple of fry in there. These are L134 Leopard Frog Pleco Fry. Now my most recent spawn, well, sadly, most of those eggs just literally melted away. I don't know if they just weren't fertile or what happened, but yeah, there was nothing I can do. And I tried keeping them or hatching them out the same that I did in the previous spawn in which we ended up with 52 my largest spawn for my L134 and let me just say those fry are doing fantastic and we're going to take a look at them in just a second but we only have the two but you know what at the end of the day two is still better than zero now down here on this 40 gallon breeder this is uh, where I keep my breeding colony of L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos Phil from Tamed Waters. Phil, if you're watching this video, here are my L260 Fry. You had mentioned you hadn't seen these in any of my previous videos. So Phil, shout out to Tamed Waters. Phil is really hooking up the Twin Cities with some fantastic fish. But here are my captive bred L260 Queen Arabesque Pleco Fry. There's nine in the box. One did escape. He usually likes to hang out. There he is. He's down in that driftwood back down in there. Now, in addition to those 10 L260 fry, Phil and everybody else, we have more L260s up here. Now, most of these are L134 Leopard Frog Plecos. We had a really nice hatch. We had 52 L134s hatch. We did lose a couple of them, so we should still have around 49 or 50 L134s, but we also have this cave full of L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos. Let me go ahead and see if we can get a better shot of all the goodness inside of this cave. All right, so I had to turn this cave around a little bit. We'll go ahead and torch it. You can see back in the back, there's a lot of Pleco Fry back there. That's a combination of L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos and L134 Leopard Frog Plecos. We have, again, 49 to 50 L134s in this fry box. We also have 15 to 17 L260s. At the end of the day, there's about $3,000 swimming in this fry box alone. All right, YouTube. Now, I also mentioned we're going to be doing a live feeding here in the fish room. I do have some live blackworms, and we're going to go ahead and feed some of the fish. Now, this video got a little longer than I thought it would be, so in the interest of time, I think we're only going to feed one of the Corydoras. We'll go ahead and feed the Corydora Suicides back here in the quarantine tank because I know they just love and attack these blackworms. But first, I'm going to show you what I do to prepare and clean the blackworms, and then we'll go ahead and feed the Corydora Suicides. So check this out. All right, YouTube, we have a bunch of live blackworms here. They look absolutely disgusting, but the fish love them. And we're going to go ahead and gather some of these up, start feeding the Corydoras. Now I do want to mention that if you bring live blackworms into your fish room, it's always a good idea to thoroughly wash and clean the blackworms before introducing them to the fish tanks. It's very common to have contaminants mixed in with the blackworms, specifically leeches. Now how I like to clean the blackworms up, I'll put them in a shallow plastic container like this here. I'll add a little bit of cold water. Then I'll just grab something to slosh them around, kind of wash them up a little bit. I'll drain the water a couple times, add fresh clean water, and then let them sit in the container for a few minutes. And then what I like to do is I'll lift up one end, I'll look at the bottom of the container, and if there's any leeches, 
they'll usually stick to the bottom of the container. And then I'll lift up the other end and just keep doing that until you're satisfied and convinced that you have removed all the leeches from the black worms. So anyways, uh, just wanted to point that out. I know these black worms have been cleaned. I've uh, removed about a dozen leeches. I know they're clean now. We're gonna go ahead, gather some up. We're gonna start feeding some Corydoras. All right, YouTube, before we end this video, I do want to mention that I will be attending my first ever Quad City Fish Swap on February 9th in Davenport, Iowa. I've heard this is a very well-organized and well-attended event. I'll be attending not just as a hobbyist, but I'll be attending as a vendor. I'll be sharing an eight-foot vendor table with my brother, who also operates a fish room similar in size to mine. We plan to have L134 Leopard Frog Plecos, L200s, perhaps some L201s, L260s. We'll have Corydoras Green Lasers, Corydoras Duplicarius. We'll have some Epistogramma Cockatoidae Double Reds. Uh, we'll have some Gyanocara Strigosi, maybe some Ocelotus Gold Shell Dwellers, a few shrimp, and perhaps some other stuff in there as well. If you're attending the Quad City Fish Swap or in the area, look for the TM Aquatics banner. Stop by, introduce yourself. Just don't forget to bring a wallet full of cash as well. All right, YouTube, there you have it. We're gonna wrap up this video here and now, but first I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to stop by my channel and watch one of my videos. Now, if you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Hit the like button on your way out. And if you haven't already done so, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button. In any case, I hope you all have a great day. And until the next time, we'll catch you all later.